Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today I'm actually not alone on camera. I've got camera guy Kurt with me, and you may remember our buddy Jeff from Redneck Reptiles. And as I look around, there's something I, I can't help that feels different, and that is I'm not in my reptile room. And I'm in a rat breeding room. Kurt, is this your rat breeding room? No, it's not my rat breeding room. This is not Kurt's rat breeding room. So what we're actually doing today is a lot of you have been asking for more rat videos. We've had this plan in coming, so we haven't done one. This is it. We're doing it for you. We are actually helping our friend Jeff set up his rat breeding room. So what we're going to do today is Kurt's going to set up the racks, and he's going to explain how he did it all and why he does it all. And you're going to see how we set up a rat breeding rack in a room this size to run an operation. About how many snakes are you going to have? Uh, start off with about 15. About 15 snakes. So stay tuned. Let's get this rocking, and here we go. Okay, so we got the first rack set up. We're gonna set up uh, two racks today. And basically, Jeff told me that he needs to produce enough uh, rats to feed 15 snakes. So that's gonna be our goal. And what we do is we put um, two females in here. There's one and then two. And usually what I expect them to produce is around eight to nine uh, baby rats per litter. So if you, if you count that, that's going to be, you know, 16 to 18 per each one of these. Well, he needs that every single week. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up this rack too. And what I do this is I do it in a five week or a, a 10 week um, kind of like a cycle to where um, I really like it to where we rotate males because when the male's in there, when he breeds the females, then he's basically done. And then the female produces the babies and all that, and they feed them. And then the male really isn't um, used for anything else. So if you have a male on every single one of these, you know, for most of the time he's not doing anything, he's just eating and taking up space. So like in this top bin up here, if Matt can show in there, there's three in there. One's a male, and then there's two females. And all these rats, these are kind of like on the small, like you would call a small to maybe like a almost a medium size. So it's going to take them, you know, maybe a few more weeks, a month at, at least to get up to size before they actually start breeding. But what we're going to do is it, we're going to do a 10 week cycle and it's going to go by two week increments. So you're going to put the male in here for two weeks and he's going to breed those females. And then what you do is you take them out and then put them in the next bin. And then after two weeks, then you put them in the next bin. And then after two weeks, you put them in the next bin. And then when you get down here, two weeks, and then you'd start it all over and put it back up here. So the gestation period of the rats is around 21 days. So the male's gonna be in here, he's gonna breed the females for two weeks, and then he's gonna go down here. Well, for the next two weeks, uh, that, that third week, that's gonna be 21 days. And on that third to fourth week, they should be having their babies. So then what's gonna happen is, um, so then he's going to be down here breeding. He goes in the next one. Well, then in the next two weeks, they're going to be having their babies. And it's just a continuous cycle. <clears throat> and once they have their pinkies, it's around five weeks to them to get up to about a small. And that's usually what we try to feed a lot of the, um, a lot of the ball pythons. You can, you know, wait another couple more weeks and they're going to be mediums. And after that, you know, it's going to take, you know, a couple more to three weeks before they're larges. Um, 
But uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have two racks running. So he's going to have the male in here for two weeks and do the same thing, but we're going to alternate it to where like it's going to be two weeks here and then move it out here. And this one's going to have that, that week still left. And then he's going to move here and it's going to be a cycle. So every, you're going to do it to where when they lay their babies, they're going to like, they're going to lay some here and then they're going to lay them here and they're going to lay them here. And like, it's going to be a continuous cycle. And the one thing I like about this, instead of just leaving the male in there is it gives the, um, the females a little bit of break from the male in there. And a lot of people, what they do is they have uh, maternity tubs where they actually, when they're, when, when they see that their female's pregnant, they take him out and they have a whole rack where they stick it in there and then that, that female will stay in there until she lays her babies. Well, basically that's what we're doing with this whole tub is turning it into a maternity tub because we're, we're taking out the male. And you can also, you know, see um, how well they're doing. And, you know, once they, um, if they're not producing, you know, around the eight to nine uh, week uh, uh, babies per litter, they can always take that female out and put in another one because you want to try to stay at a constant thing. So, you know, he's going to be right at that 15 uh, rats per week and probably producing a little bit more. You always, you know, it's always better to have just a little bit more than a little bit less. Um, so then one thing I, I recommended to him too was to do a watering system. This is just so much easier because you just got to put this bucket in here. This will probably last, like I feel mine at the shop I don't know, this will probably last him over a week before he suits it, maybe once a week, maybe a little bit longer than that before he's gonna have to fill it. Otherwise, like using like these, um, <clears throat> these water things, it's like every day to every two days you're having to fill these and it's kind of a pain. Um, and if it's not sending in the right, if it's, if it's laying like on this, um, <clears throat> this wire mesh at all, they're gonna chew a hole in it and then you have, you know, a big hole in your, in your watering system um, so we ran a line from here and this is a uh, quick disconnect where this is full of water right now but when you take it out it doesn't leak water so you can you, so you can take the bucket down if you want to when you drill your hole you want it up a little bit I maybe just went a little bit high but so what happens is when there's get stuff in there it's going to settle to the bottom and it's not going to go into your here um, into your hoses because what's going to happen is there's little uh, there's um, springs in here that's going to get on the spring and it's going to clog it and then your rats won't get any water. So then you can just put that right back in there like that and then there's there's water to them. But you can, if you want to come in here. And what I also did too is I put a washer on the top of this so it keeps it from sinking in because you don't want to get it to, like if one of these gets a little bit spread out, that, that uh, water nipple could actually go all the way in there. But then I put a little uh, clip on the bottom too so that you can't, they can't move it or pull it out. So you won't have um, any trouble with that. And then if you put your finger on here, you can see that there's water coming out of it. And then we put the food up here on top. You don't want to put the food in the, in the bin at all because then the rats will kind of, they'll, they'll pee and they'll poop on it and then they could get you know, sick from eating it. So it's up here, what they're gonna do is they're gonna reach up, they're gonna chew on it and they'll chew off little bits of it and they'll eat it. And it's just a lot easier and a lot cleaner to keep it. And you wanna try to keep it away from here because if this does get a little water, these will kind of get swelled up and then they'll turn to kind of mush. And you don't really want that. So like on this rack here, they actually built a separate bin for your food. And then when you put the water, you'll put it over here. Um, <clears throat> but it just makes it simple. What I recommend on cleaning all these out is you want to do every seven to 10 days. It's best if you can get it in like a weekly routine where you come in, like having just two racks won't be that hard. You can just come in say on a Sunday, you know, pull them out, take the litter out, put fresh litter in, um, just check the water and everything, you know, refit, put the food in there. This is, uh, we use Missouri food, which is basically it's designed to be the best diet and every nutrition that the rats need. Um, you don't want to use like dog food or anything like that because it's you no know, design for dogs. Um, but basically, if you do it this way, you should be able to produce enough food that you won't have to buy food for your snakes. Um, and then basically all it is is your time and then the, um, the cost of the food for the rats, which makes it a lot cheaper you know, if you're able to do this for your uh, snakes. Do you have any questions, Jeff? Or? 
uh, for people that have like hard water and whatnot, uh, replacement parts for the nipples and whatnot, because eventually it's going to build up in there. Yeah, basically what it could, it could like build up on the, uh, the lines, which you can just kind of replace the lines. Um, on these, I actually have one here. Um, you open it up and what it is, there's a spring in there and then there's a little piece in here. What happens is they, they hit this part here and it pushes it up and actually um, this blocks the water from going through. It fits down in there and it blocks the water from going in. Well, they push up on that and it allows the water to go in and that spring keeps, that, keeps this taut where it's down. So then when they push up on there, it pushes that little plunger up and allows the water to go in. But the main thing is you'll get water around this part here. You'll get like a little gunk around here and around the spring. Um, you can replace these. I usually just take them out and just kind of clean them up. You can wash them off if you want and then just, you know, kind of put it back. Um, but yeah, okay, you so know, it's uh, pretty low maintenance. Yeah. So, and you want to kind of check and make sure, you know, every time I kind of go, you just kind of put your finger on there and just make sure that they're getting water because you don't want to have a problem where your rats aren't getting enough water. Um, but as long as they have a good source of water, good source of food, and they have, you know, decent temperatures, it's not really hot or really cold, they should be able to, you know, be producing pretty good. Um, but uh, we're going to actually set up this rack. Uh, we did the other one on camera where we did high speed and then we're going to set up this one later. Um, but the, you know, this, the way I do it to where you switch out the males, it just seems simpler. Yeah, if you leave the male in there because a, a, a female rat can actually get pregnant like right after they have the litter. They can have a litter and then get pregnant again. So then they're, you know, they're actually pregnant as they're nursing their ones they just had, which I think is a lot. You know, some people do that. I think it's a lot harder on the, the females in because they're, they don't get a break at all. This system allows them to get a little bit of a break. Um, there's actually like a one to two week period in there where they're not even, they're not going to have any babies in there at all. They're just going to be there by themselves before the male is actually reintroduced. And if you can kind of stagger it to where you move one here and do it, they should be fresh pinkies and babies, you know, uh, done every single week. And it's a lot easier to, to maintain and uh, kind of track that way too. All right. All right. One thing I'll add, I get to ask questions today when I was like, I love doing something different every now and then. Uh, I would say, too, you know, we run our rat room the way you were describing the mail stays all the time, correct? Yeah. But one of the differences is, you know, we're selling as a shop and we're producing, we, we don't always know how many rats we're going to need. Is that fair to say? Yeah. But when you're running the collection and you're mostly breeding your rodents to your collection at home, the main thing is having enough food for what you're doing. And this, when we used to do it this way before we had the shop, provided a very, I mean, a very consistent amount of rats. Kurt always had exactly what I needed. We had just enough to help a few customers out to pay for a rat food, and that was it. Never too many, never too little. It was so consistent, and he was rotating males in. So would you say this is a better way to do it if you're as a hobbyist level? Yeah, and I'm planning on doing it at the pet shop. I just need to have more time where I can track and rotate males and do all that. And it takes a little bit of time. Like when you're first starting out like this is the best time to do it. But when you already have, you know, all these females and males and everything, it's a little bit harder to you know, implement that system. It just takes a little bit of time and planning to do that. And what I'd probably do is do half of them at the shop kind of started on that way. And then once they get good and going, then I'll start the other half of the shop um, that way. And, and like it's, it, it, it's, I think it's better for the rats because they're not stressed out. And it's also uh, cheaper because you have less males. Like this one, you know, otherwise we'd have to have, I have 11 rats on this rack, or otherwise I'd have to have 15. So you have four extra mouths you have to feed. And over, you know, that's not that much, but over time it adds up. And if you have as many racks as we have, we have nine racks that has 32 tubs in each of them. So there's, you know, that's a lot of extra rats that you can, you know, add in there. Anything else? Um, as far as hobbyists go, uh, where best place to get the like the Missouri the bedding and whatnot? Uh, we go to our local uh, co-op, and that's where we get it. Um, <clears> that they usually keep it in stock. You know, at the shop, I buy twenty bags a week. This will probably last you, I don't know, probably three weeks to a month or so. It just depends on once they get bigger, they're going to start eating more. At this at this young, they're not going to eat you know that much. Um, but then we also get the litter there. One thing I would recommend um, 
is maybe going to like like a Orsalins or somewhere or Tractor Supply and getting some cedar bedding because that helps keep away the uh, the ticks or not the ticks but the fleas and just little insects that uh, that your rats will kind of uh, attract. But what you want to do is I usually do it uh, to uh, a fourth to a third of it. You don't want it because the cedar is like the oil in there can be kind of toxic and you don't want it too much. You don't want to put all the cedar in there. So you want to keep mostly because it's just pine shavings. And so we do a fourth to a third of it, the, the cedar and then the, the rest of it, the pine. Um, we've noticed at the shop because we have so many, we, we had a bunch of fleas and stuff like that. So we started doing this and it's basically all gone. During the winter time, it's not that bad, but in the summertime, you'll have to watch it and just kind of check on them and make sure. And usually you'll see them like on the edge or, you know, running around or you see your rats itching a lot. Um, one thing you would kind of want to watch too is it's really important to keep them clean because your rats will get ear infections. And if you see them kind of going like this on sideways in their cage, that means they have an ear infection or they could get like an eye infection. Their eyes will kind of start to turn red and stuff. But um, you just want to make sure that you keep them clean. That's why I say every seven to 10 days, kind of uh, clean them out. Um, but other than that, it's really not, not too complicated. Uh, me being a stickler for being clean, <laughs> seven days is going to be easy. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, see you next week. <laughs>